Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. As long-term viewers may know, I'm involved in digging some sandstone tunnels out in Wisconsin at a friend's property known as Sandland. Now one thing we get asked is, what is the air quality like underground when you're digging your own tunnels? Now we do have powered ventilation when we're digging, and we've never had a problem with air quality, but I thought this was an interesting question to look into. My handheld sensor device, or tricorder, is another thing you might recognize from prior project videos. It's got a RTL-SDR in there to snoop on radio traffic, and it's got a basic thermal camera in it. Now today I'm going to try to add this CO2 sensor module, and this particulate or dust sensor, which is a little more complicated, but should have a simpler interface using USB. Now I've never used either of these devices, so I'm going to have to do some research to figure out how they work, and what kind of scripting we'll need to get data off of them and into a readable format. This particulate matter sensor is quite a bit bigger and bulkier, so it probably won't fit my little waterproof case. We may have to mount this externally, or just use it occasionally as needed. This little guy needs some soldering, and I'm going to have to hook up some of the individual pins from the Pi's bus here. So let's start with this one since it seems a little more complicated. I have to admit, I can never quite get soldering to work right, and I'm never quite sure why. But I'm not very good at it, so... I'm hoping this is going to go well this time. Alright, so that's probably not the best soldering ever, but it's soldering, and I think it's got uh, continuity. So, now we need to connect this thing to the I2C bus on the Raspberry Pi, which I think my thermal sensor is already using. But supposedly you can connect multiple things to that same bus. So I might have to dig into my wiring harness a little bit, and maybe uh, jumper some things over, maybe connect some things together, hopefully not destroy anything that I already have, because I like the little thermal camera, but I'd like to be able to use both the thermal camera and the CO2 sensor. Alright, I've broken out all the wires that I should need, so now I should be able to hook up that little sensor and start on the coding part of it, which, when I say coding, I mean copying and pasting from the internet. Alright, let's see if we can detect this thing. And I believe it's the 5A device, so it looks like it's hooked up correctly. I did have to change the baud rate on that I2C bus, so let's see if my thermal camera still works. Because that is on the same bus. And it seems like it's still working, so that's good. Now here comes my favorite programming technique. Copying someone else's work. Alright, we seem to be getting data from that little sensor. And the read interval in the default code is every minute, so... I'm gonna try breathing on it and see if it goes up. Alright, and it has increased from me breathing on it, so I'm gonna say this CO2 sensor is now operational. So I've put a shortcut on the Pi's desktop here to the CO2 monitor program. So I can pull that up and it'll start giving me the CO2 values. Now I've also plugged in the USB to serial adapter for my dust sensor here. And uh, this is a problem with the Pi. Those uh, USB ports are so close together that anything larger than usual gets jammed in there kind of sideways. This all seems to still be working. My SDR unit is still working and I think this is working so I'm going to leave them kind of crooked like that. It looks ugly, but the rest of this device doesn't look the prettiest anyway, so I don't care that much. We'll go ahead and install some of the dependencies for this. Alright, we've got the particle sensor hooked up. We've got the Python script downloaded. Let's see if it will do stuff. And it looks like it is reading air quality index, so that's pretty cool. I don't really have a way to test the efficiency of this without throwing some sand at it, but that's what Sandland is for. So here I am down in the Sandland tunnels, and it's the start of the day. Nobody's been digging yet. In fact, I'm the first person to walk into the tunnels for about a week. So the CO2 levels and the dust levels should be about the lowest they ever get. Let's fire up the sensor and see what we find. So here in the donut room, it looks like our particulate matter uh, the PM 2.5 number is about 4 to 6, the PM 10 number is about 40 to 80, and the CO2 is between 400 and 500 parts per million. And we'll check down at the dig face, where I'll be spending most of my time 
digging out my bar. You'll probably see that in a different video soon enough. So this is the little room that I've been digging out. And this is basically a dead-end room at the end of a dead-end passage at this point. So there's not a lot of natural airflow in here other than what gets moved around just by me moving back and forth with wheelbarrows. So down here at the dig face, my airborne sand measurement started out really low, but then it jumped up, and that might be because I kicked up some sand as I came in here. I know all these numbers are really hard to read on the little screen, so I'll try to make a spreadsheet or something to throw into the video later. And then just for fun, here's my thermal camera. This is in the 30 to 50 range, it's just seeing some slight variations in the temperature of the walls. Alright, so here in the outside world, we're getting uh, CO2 levels around 400, and particulate matter 2.5 around 7, particulate matter 10 around 12, whatever that means. So let's see what it looks like inside after we've dug for half a day. Alright, so right here at the loading platform, with our fan running, we're getting CO2 of about 970 parts per million. We're getting um, uh, PM2 of about 40 to 50, and PM10 of about 300 to 500. We're definitely fogging up in here. Anyway, in the donut room, we've got a CO2 level of about 831 parts per million. Particulate matter, the PM2.5 is between about 10 and 20. And that PM10 is between about uh, 50 and 70. So when we're digging down here, we always wear full protective equipment, including a helmet, a face mask to keep the sand out of your eyes, earmuffs, and a respirator. So now that I'm all kitted up, let's get out the electric demolition hammer and start making some airborne particulates. Alright, I just ran the jackhammer, so there should be lots of airborne sand right now. Let's see what the meter says. The particulate matter, the PM2.5, has jumped up to about 129, and the PM10 has jumped up to the 500s. So this is where we've been doing the most work, and there's the least airflow, which makes sense that all the numbers are higher. And that's why I'm wearing my respirator again. So I'm sure all this sand is really bad for my electronics. So I'm going to get my stuff out of here before I destroy it completely. So after crunching the numbers for a little bit, we find a definite overall increase in the airborne particulate matter during the course of the day. And that's at both the uh, donut room and the dig face. And that's pretty much to be expected. We're not digging at the beginning of the day. And as we dig more sand out, there's more airborne sand. Now, oddly enough, the CO2 seems to have gone up midday and then gone back down, both at the dig face and at the donut room. I'm not quite sure why that is. We might have to look into that a little more. Overall, the CO2 doesn't seem to be much of an issue. Um, OSHA's standards for CO2, you have to get up to about 5,000 ppm for an eight-hour workday before it gets uh, to be a problem. And at our maximum, we're seeing uh, levels more like a typical indoor office building of about uh, 400 to 1,000. So as far as the uh, particulate matter, um, when we're not digging, it's somewhere around moderate to fair. When we are digging, it gets all the way up to extremely poor. And that's close to living in some industrial areas in uh, third world countries. So that's pretty bad. We don't want to be breathing that. That's why we keep the respirators on in all the digging areas, and we're trying to protect our health long term. So this has been pretty interesting to me uh, to actually quantify some of the numbers that we're seeing on air quality down there. And it certainly justifies the protections that we use. And it definitely tells me there's not too much of an issue with CO2, at least at this point. As we start digging farther and deeper underground, we might want to look at more active ventilation. 
I hope this has been an interesting video. I definitely learned a little bit while making it, and I had a lot of fun putting the pieces together and adding some capabilities to my little handheld tricorder thing. I'm off to vacuum the sand out of my tricorder, so I'll wrap this up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.